go into Greek myth knowing that there's going to be tragedy and despair because that is pretty much all they are. <laughs> Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and today we're doing a video that I have spent like a year working on really because I've had to read all the books for this. I'm so excited. This is my Greek mythology kind of recommendations. I didn't want to rank them but I also didn't want to do a guide to Greek mythology, like where to start with them, because I feel like I'm not a classicist. I haven't studied any of this. I have read this all for sheer enjoyment and I do genuinely love reading these books. I just wanted to talk to you about the Greek mythology books that I have read, really enjoyed, and whether I would recommend them on etc. So that's what we're going to go with. Now I have split this video into three parts. Hopefully I can work out how to do the timestamps for you. The first part is going to be mythology all around the Trojan War because that's definitely where I've read the most. It's something that I really enjoy. Within each section we're going to be talking about more popular books and then some lesser known books, books that I don't see many people talking about. The next section is going to be different myths that I've read that aren't to do with the Trojan War, so things like Medusa. And then the third part is going to be mythology books that are on my TBR that I want to read soon. So with all of that out the way let's just dive straight into this and we're going to start off with the epic classic and that's the Iliad by Homer. So this one is telling the story of the last year of the Trojan War. So we're in the 10th and final year of the Trojan War. This is epic poetry. I will say this was a bit hard to read at times. It's actually quite accessible. I actually think it's quite readable. However, it is very, very repetitive. You're going to get characters introduced in the exact same way every single time they prop up. It's just what it is. So that can make it quite slow. For me, I found that quite slow to get through. However, I am really, really pleased that I read this because I enjoy retellings so much, not just mythology, but any retellings. I love the classics. Love seeing where we've got that inspiration from. Love seeing what parts they have taken from the original and retold. It's just been so good. I've really, really enjoyed it. So I'm really, really pleased that I read this so I know where all of that came from. You don't have to, obviously. This was just something that I like doing and I like doing it with books across all different genres. If I'm reading a book that's been inspired by something else, I want to read the book that inspired it to see where it all came from. So this was fantastic for that, but it did did take me a couple months to get through just because of how repetitive it is at times and I do think I have to be in that headspace to know that this is going to be a bit of a harder read, it's going to take a bit more concentration, but I still enjoyed it and I still think it was worth the read considering how much it has inspired. Now I have to say my love for the Trojan War has come from the film Troy. <laughs> I loved that film when I was younger. I now know after reading this and reading so many retellings how inaccurate that film was. Like it's so bad. But it was definitely a film that I loved and so the minute I started realising that there were books around that I was like well I have to read them all. And so reading the original classic that drew from that it was great. It was absolutely amazing. Some of the more modern retellings. I'm going, like I mentioned, in order of books that I think are more popular ones, but also ones that I think are easier to read direct retellings of. So one that I recommend is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. This is really good if the Iliad intimidates you and you are not ready yet for this book, like for whatever reasons you have or you just don't want to read this one. This is a really good one to do because it does talk about a lot of the things that happens in the Iliad but from the female perspective. So you have this written as a muse that is given the poet inspiration to write this story and then she talks about this whole host of women that are affected by this battle. Now it does go into more than just the Iliad, it goes into the Odyssey and a few other texts which Natalie Haynes talks about at the very end of this book where she got her references from. So it is really helpful if you're interested in getting into Greek mythology, you know nothing about it and you want a base this is really good for that because you get lots of snippets of different stories, different things that are put together in this. For that reason, found it a little bit 
frustrating at times because you do only get short stories of these women. It's basically a short story collection within a wider story. I like the idea behind all of that but for me as someone that's read so many and this is the most recent mythology book that I've read, I feel like I read it at the wrong time but I really recommend if you're just getting into Greek mythology and want a starting point this is so good for that. And like I say it does focus on the Battle of Troy, it focuses on the lead up, what caused it, the fact that the goddesses are so petty and it was that pettiness that brought this all about, then the resulting impact of all these different women that are affected across different planes, it, it was really really good for that. So I do recommend. One that focuses solely on the Trojan War, we have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Now I know you've probably seen this everywhere, it is everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere, everyone's talking about it and I know some people say it's overhyped but I love this book so so much, it was absolutely fantastic. This is all about Achilles but it's told from Patroclus' perspective and I think it was absolutely divine. We're following Patroclus from a young child growing up with Achilles, how he had to go to be with Achilles, be Achilles' companion and you're seeing the boys grow up, the training that they go through, the fact that Achilles didn't want to be a part of the Battle of Troy, that he tried to hide away and then how he got brought into it and everything that results around that. So it was really, really good, really impactful. You really don't like Achilles in this but that's kind of the point, you're not meant to. Throughout every rendition of the Troy. Achilles is not a likeable character, even in the Iliad he is seen as arrogant and yeah he's not the nicest. But at the end of this book I was crying. I was so sad and heartbroken over this story. I think it's so well written. It's absolutely divine. Now I have to admit when I first picked this book up I didn't think I was going to like it. I actually got a different copy from the charity shop and gave it to my mum to read first and she said actually this is really worth it and then I read it and fell in love. Gave that copy to my sister to read and bought myself a brand new one. I really want to reread it and annotate it. So if you're looking for more about Achilles and Patroclus and everything that happened around that then this is the book for that. There is another book that I've read but I have since unhauled and that is Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is a book which retells the story of Queen Baricius. Now Queen Baricius is mentioned very very briefly within the Iliad. She's literally a few lines long. You do get more of it in Song of Achilles because Queen Baricius is a massive person within the Trojan War actually. She was the reason why Achilles Achilles stopped fighting for a little while and then eventually Achilles rejoined and that was kind of the end of the Trojan War. But she was a massive part of that and she only ever gets a small mention so I was very intrigued by Pat Barker's book of having a whole story about her. I have two problems with this book. The first problem is the language used. This is a retelling of the book. It's done in that time. However, the language is just filled with profanities and I just don't think it's needed. Like they don't have profanities in the Iliad so there is no need for profanities in our book. I mean you can say that you're trying to make it more modern but I feel like to make the modern reader interested you don't need to swear. That's just my personal gripe on that. The second point is this was meant to be a book about Queen Baricius, it's about giving her a voice. However the second half of it just focused and switched to Achilles perspective and just focused on him which I do understand because of everything that happens at the end of it and Achilles dying but this was supposed to be about Queen Baricius. It wasn't supposed to be about Achilles. Like Achilles is a major part of it because of the fact that Queen Baricius, her family gets slaughtered by Achilles and then she becomes his slave. I do think quick because there's a lot more to it than just she's treated horribly. So Achilles is a massive part of all of that and so you can't take him out of it but I don't know why we got a perspective of him and then she got kind of sidelined towards the end of the book. So I just feel like it wasn't wasn't quite what I was hoping for, but I do recommend if you want to learn more about Queen Baricius because she is such an integral role within the Battle of Troy and I think it's really worth reading. Moving on from the actual Battle of Troy, we have The Sisters. Now I'm going to start off with a more popular book and then go into the rest of it. Now by The Sisters I mean Helen and Clytemestra. They are the two women that this war kind of centered around. So obviously Helen was Helen of Sparta and then Paris came along and took her to Troy and that's what sparked the whole battle. Clytemestra is Helen's sister. Now I'm going to talk about the more popular book but I think there are books that do this story from Helen's perspective. Like basically this book focuses on Clytemestra. Um, so we'll talk about that one but 
This one is the popular one. This is Electra by Jennifer Saint. And this has three perspectives. You have Clytemestra, who is Helen's sister. You have Electra, who is Clytemestra's youngest daughter. And then you have Cassandra. Now, Cassandra is Paris's sister. Three amazing women that are so fantastic. Like, they're actually some of my favourites to read from. Clytemestra and Cassandra are some of my favourites to read retellings about. Clytemestra's story is absolutely heartbreaking. Agamemnon, her husband, has to sacrifice so that they can go on to the Battle of Troy. So basically, they're all going to war, they've all decided they're going to go to war, and then before they can even get there, they can't sail. There's no wind, there's nothing happening. And so Agamemnon is told by a priest that he has offended, I think it was Athena, and they have demanded retribution. Now this retribution causes Agamemnon's downfall because what he does and then the result of all of that, like it's, it's horrendous. So this perspective is 10 years after. So at the end of the Battle of Troy, they're coming home and that is what this perspective is around. So you're seeing the start of it, they're wanting to go to Troy and then you're seeing it when they're coming home and what is awaiting Agamemnon and the resulting fallout from that from Electra's perspective and Cassandra who is very much caught up within this story. It is gut-wrenching, heartbreaking and fantastic with these really three powerful strong women and seeing the way Jennifer Saint really worked around their stories. It was absolutely amazing. However, if you're wanting more about the two sisters, so you're wanting Helen's perspective and you're wanting a bit more about Clytemestra and seeing before, like when they were getting married and everything that was going on from that and not just the vengeance side of it, which is kind of what this book focuses on, then I've got a couple books. So one that I absolutely loved for both the sisters' perspective is Daughters of Sparta by Claire Hayward. This was fantastic. You are seeing this from the two perspectives. So you get some chapters that are Helen and some that are Clytemestra. And this was really good because you see them as young children and see them growing up, see them choosing their husbands or, well, being chosen, and then seeing them go their separate ways and the different things that result because of it all. I think this book does that really well if you're interested in that side of it. One of my favourites to have both the sisters retold, just a really beautiful story and it's also about just wanting to be loved. You're seeing Helen's perspective as she is married to Menelas and feeling like she's so alone, that she's not in a marriage that's filled with love and she's not happy and then she goes to Troy with Paris um, and then you realise how alone she is there and how this wasn't what she hoped it would be at all and she was really kind of like led along to believe that he really loved her like you you really get a sense for how young she is in this book which I think a lot of people seem to forget it also did a bit more into it which I thought was really interesting I don't want to give it away because I thought it really added to Helen's character but I really enjoyed that and then you have Clytemestra and you're seeing Clytemestra portrayed in many different ways. You get it in lots of different ways. You have it in here where she is wracked with grief and so cut off from her family and she can't be there for them. In here you're seeing her again just wanting to be loved, wanting to be the best daughter that she can be within the restraints of society, the heartbreak that she then goes through and then her filled with vengeance, filled with wrath at the start and then starting to like lose that and starting to just be like I'm just happy I just want to be happy I just don't want my children to be at risk anymore and then the end decision that she still decides to go through I think this one does such a more well-rounded aspect of these two women I, I really do like that. Okay, but then if you're interested in more just Helen's side of things, I would recommend Helen of Troy by Margaret George. This is a big ass book, like this is a big book, but I really enjoyed this because again, you're seeing Helen and Clytemestra because at the start of this book, obviously they're growing up together and that's what this book starts off with. In this one, Clytemestra is portrayed as a person who knows exactly what she wants, that she's very fierce and very bold and she goes for Agamemnon because she feels like he could be her equal. And then you have Helen who is just like really unsure and really like feels like, I don't know what to do. Loads of people like me because of my look but I just want to be liked, like I just don't know. And again, the f 
everything that then follows from there and I really liked this one I thought it was really good it is a longer read it's not a book I see anyone talking about but I do recommend this one I think that this was a really nice insight into Helen you don't get as much from Clytemestra's perspective you're seeing it through Helen's eyes and seeing how she sees her sister and then everything else but I liked this one because this is the one that does the most insight into Helen's time at Troy that I have personally read I think it did that really well and it was really interesting to see how she could get on within Troy especially as a Greek being an outsider only being brought along because of Paris and then the resulting war and the fact that people blame her for everything that's happened I thought that was very well done really well explored in here then as I said Cassandra is another person that I really love and a good book for that is Cassandra by Krista Wolf. Now Cassandra as I said is Paris's sister. She is a person that was gifted and then cursed by Apollo. She was cursed because she refused to sleep with him. Gift was of prophecy because Cassandra really wanted to know prophecy but because she then refused Apollo he cursed her so that nobody would ever believe her and as a result a lot of people think she's mad. This has been portrayed in many different ways so you get it in Electra you're seeing her deal with the fact that she knows what's going to happen, that nobody is going to believe her and how she's then struggling, how her demise ties in with Clytemestra and how that all worked. You did also have that within A Thousand Ships. You had parts of Cassandra which were interwoven with this story. Cassandra is a big one that you cannot cut out of the story because she is the one that was telling everyone that Troy was going to fall and nobody believed her until it was too late. This is a really interesting story. This is not really written as chapters. This is stream of consciousness and as a result the timings of things kind of go all over the place. We're seeing Cassandra at the end of the war that Troy has fallen. She's on the ship with Agamemnon. He is the one that has claimed her but she is thinking back on different parts of her life and that's what this follows. So you're going to have flashes of present time when she's going back to Agamemnon's home, which I've forgotten the name of, which is really bad, um, but she's traveling back with him. You then get flashes where she's thinking about her past, where she's thinking about things that were happening while Helen was in Troy, and then you get again a glimpse of the present timeline. I really liked that, I thought it was really well done, really interesting. This is translated from German. Crystal Wolf has written other books that I really want to read, they're just a bit harder to find, but I would really recommend this one. Again it's a book that I don't see many people talking about but I think Cassandra is such an integral part to the Battle of Troy that if you want to see this from within the walls, seeing it from a Trojan's perspective I think Cassandra is a really good character to do that with realizing that this video is going to be longer than what I thought but those are all the books that I have read that are around the Iliad that are retellings of the Trojan War there is a part of the Trojan War with another book that I've read but it focuses more on the Odyssey than anything else, which is a book that came after the Trojan War. This is all about Odysseus, who was part of the Trojan War, came and went and fought at Troy, and then he took 10 years to get back home. And all that while we had Penelope waiting for him. And so the Penelope ad by Margaret Atwood is another one that I really like. This one doesn't focus on the war as much. We are seeing Penelope and how she's dealing with the fact that her husband is away for 20 years because of the war and the Battle of Troy. This one I feel uh, really conflicted by because I liked but I also didn't. There are parts of this book that I didn't enjoy that much however I really enjoyed the story of Penelope, the fact that she is really witty and cunning, the way that she has to deal with the fact that she's got all these men that are kind of sniffing around her wanting her weakness, wanting her kingdom because they're like Odysseus is not coming back so you know we want to be here and the way that she then has to kind of navigate that uh, without offending them but without giving into them either. I thought it was really really good depiction of of the precarious position that women are in. We also have a look at the maidens. At the end of the Odyssey, saying this without reading the Odyssey, but from what I know, the maidens are hanged. We have seven maidens that are hanged and you're seeing how Penelope actually got the maidens to help her with 
having to deal with what was going on. I thought this was a really good book, there were just some parts of the writing that I couldn't quite connect to, but the base point of it all I thought was really interesting, really good to see a female perspective. I do recommend, it was just certain aspects of the writing I couldn't get into because there were some poems, some songs, some things like that which I don't get into. The rest of this I thought it was good. The more I sit with it, the more I liked it. But then we have a bunch of books that are not to do with the Odyssey or the Iliad. One which I'm currently reading, which is Ovid Metamorphoses. This is, again, a classic. And I'm pleased I'm reading this. This is done in epic poetry, and this is a bunch of poems about mythology all to do with transformation. So you have mentions of Medusa, mentions of Hades and Persephone. You've got so, so many. So this is really handy for reading about those original myths and seeing, again, where people take their inspiration, how they've changed things. We've also had Medea and Jason and there's a lot that's been going on in this book but I am still halfway through so I can't give you all my thoughts. I am taking it slowly. This one is easier to read because it's a bunch of short poems but again it is poetry and I really have to be in the mindset to read that one so it's taken me a bit longer but again I will always recommend the classics, the originals as books to read to see where authors have got their inspirations from. But again let's talk about some popular authors. We have Madeline Miller obviously. We have Galatea, which is a tiny little short story about this sculpture that created this woman that was so beautiful and he wants her to live and so he prays to the goddess and the goddess turns this statue into reality, a real woman. Madeline Miller has done it from the female's perspective of the fact that she was called into life as a result, has to bow down to the whims of this man just because he kind of made her and it's like really questions that I have become human, do I not get rights, do I not get choices like every other human but the creator feels like no you don't because I created you so you do as I say and so I feel like it does a really good question. It is a tiny little book and I know that has bothered a lot of people and to be honest I think this should have been part of a short story collection but I still recommend, I still liked it. We then of course have Circe by Madeline Miller. This one is about the first witch so I recommend this if you like witchy books as well as Greek myths. But yeah, we're seeing Circe. Now Circe is actually mentioned in the Odyssey. I probably should have put this with the Penelope ad. The Odyssey, she gets a mention because Odysseus ends up on her island and she is only mentioned for like two pages or something. And so Madeline Miller was like, um, no, I want a whole story about her and made one. And what's really interesting is that you do get Odysseus in this book, but he's only in it for two pages or two chapters or something small. So I like that. I thought that was really, really good. A nice reflection of like twisting the tail. This one is a quieter book. This is a story about a witch who everybody fears her because of what she's able to do. As a result, she is exiled onto this island and the only news that she gets is by people coming to her island and telling her what's going on. That is what this story is. It's hearing stories that Circe finds out about. You do get other stories mixed in with this like her sister. Her sister is the mother of the Minotaur and so you learn about that story which actually is mentioned in Ovid's Metamorphoses which I quite liked. You have a whole part about the Minotaur in here. So this book kind of encapsulates Metamorphoses the Odyssey and a few other Greek classics and brings them to life in this but from the perspective of Circe. When I first read this I wasn't like oh I really loved this book but again the more I sit with it the more I really liked it and I think I'm gonna love it on reread. And then as we mentioned the Minotaur we have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint and Ariadne is the sister of the Minotaur. She is the one that helps Theseus slay the Minotaur. She is the one that's behind all of that and then she gets betrayed by Theseus and he marries her sister. Going to Greek myths knowing that there's going to be tragedy and despair because that is pretty much all they are. But this was, again, it kind of reminds me like Circe. If you like Circe, read Ariadne. If you like Song of Achilles, then read Electra. I think that's the way comparison that I like doing with these books. I really enjoyed this one. The writing is absolutely beautiful but again it is more of a slower tale. There isn't as much rage in this book. Um, there are parts but it's definitely more of a slower and kind of like mirrors Circe in a way where Ariadne gets left on this island and then she's having to deal with just people coming to this island where she then learns about things. And again, a very tragic tale, but beautiful. So I recommend this one if you're interested in the Minotaur tale and if you liked Circe 
give this one a go. Moving on to some Medusa, I read Athena's Child by Hannah M. Lynn. This was a more recent ebook and I did like this one. This tells the tale of Medusa, how she became the Gorgon that we know. Halfway through it then changes and we get the tale of Perseus and his going around killing Medusa. I didn't like the latter half of this book. I adored the first half. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and really explored Medusa and her time in the temple, what she had to do there and I really liked it for that. I then didn't like the second half mainly because it felt like two separate books squished together which I didn't really like. It could have been handled in a slightly different way but that's just my personal opinion. I do recommend it though if you're interested in retellings of Medusa and Perseus. I think it does a good job of exploring both sides of it. Another Medusa retelling that I don't see anyone talking about is Medusa by Rosie Hewlett. Now this one is full of feminine rage absolutely chock full of it and again we're seeing the tale of Medusa, the fact that she was at the temple, the fact that Poseidon then assaulted her and then she was punished and changed and I know that there has been this whole thing going around about how Medusa was never punished. I'm gonna argue that and say that she was. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion obviously but I personally think that she was and even in Ovis Metamorphosis it does state she was punished by the goddess. As much as the modern ways that it's been interpreted is that she wasn't punished, she was given the strength to make sure that no men ever touched her again, yes, but it was intended as a punishment from the original and as a result a lot of retellings do focus on the fact that it was a punishment and that's what I kind of stand with. But everyone has their own different opinions and if you see it differently, that's absolutely fine. But for this one it really does go into that female rage and I liked that. There have been a lot of other retellings. You've got Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. I haven't actually read that one although my sister has and she said it was really good. So there are a lot more retellings about Medusa but I've only read these two and uh, plus the bit in the Metamorphosis. That's to do with Medusa. I do definitely want to read more. It's a tale that I think is absolutely tragic and I'm really interested in seeing how it's been depicted in other ways. I know there's a, quite a lot of books out there. And then we move on to... The last book that I have to talk about, and the lighting went really weird there, sorry, um, and that is Argo by Mark Knowles. This is a Jason and the Argonauts retelling, which I didn't know anything about Jason and the Argonauts before going into this book, and I think this one is a really good one to do if you don't know anything about it like me, and you just want to understand what on earth they got up to. This is a duology. This first book focuses on Jason and the Argonauts going to the place where he's going to steal the fleece and then the second book focuses on them coming back. I will say that I didn't actually love this book. I'm actually contemplating unhauling this book. It kind of strips out all the mythology. It makes it into one that yes is more believable but I wanted the mythology in it. I wanted that retelling. Also it does feel like a tick box exercise like Jason went here, tick, gets back in his boat travels a bit further, gets off and does this bit, tick, and it doesn't really feel like an expanded story. Now I know some people do like this, which is amazing, but for me personally I just, it felt too bland. I feel like that's the word that I'm looking for. It just felt a bit stale, it didn't really explore everyone. I feel a bit hard done by, by the fact that um, Atalanta, which is the new Jennifer Saint book, which I, I've already mentioned but I really want to read it. She had such a bad rep in this book. She got a one line one sentence and it wasn't even accurate so that really bothered me as well because Atalanta was the first and only woman to go with the men on the Argonauts like that that was it he just wrote her out of it <laughs> I was like what now she's not in every m classic mythology she she's not but I still don't think you should write her out of it completely so yeah I didn't didn't love this one um and it was really big and it felt really drawn out in places especially because we're just seeing them go from place to place to place but we're going to strip out all the mythology and all the exciting parts of this so it was just it, it just didn't work for me personally I liked it because I've read some parts of this again metamorphosis I'm seeing the parts that are linking up to this and I was really excited to read this to see how Atalanta fitted in when I realised that Atalanta went with Jason and the Argonauts. I was really excited because I was in the middle of reading this and then yeah I just I think it was just a bit disappointing for what I wanted. So those are all the Greek myth books that I have read and I have a couple that are on my physical TBR. So obviously I've got a few to buy but the ones that I have physically, a couple more. First of all The Odyssey by Homer and this one's been translated by Emily Wilson. Really excited to read this one. Obviously 
as I've mentioned, I like reading the originals to see where all of our inspirations have come from and yeah, very excited. But I do need to be in the mood, although this one does look a lot more readable, which I'm very excited about. So I do want to get on to reading that. We then also have another Trojan War retelling because of course I do. And this one is Clytemestra. This one is by Constance Cassidy, sorry I've mispronounced that, but this one is clearly focusing on Clytemestra. Of course I was going to pick it up, Clytemestra as I've already mentioned is one of my favourites, so we're going to be seeing her story I imagine from when she's a young child to then what happens, and what Agamemnon does and then the revenge that she plots. So I already know the story but I love looking at how authors can write it in so many different ways, the different things that they focus on, the way they portray the women, I really really enjoy it for that. So that's one that is high up on my list to get to soon. And then I have Pandora and this is by Susan Stokes Chapman. My mum is currently reading this one when I'm filming it. She really likes it. And this is the retelling of Pandora's box. Although the box, I didn't realise, was actually a vase originally so we've just changed it over time to Pandora's box. It was originally Pandora's vase um, and so that's what this book is about. So again I'm intrigued. I've heard mixed things. My mum really likes it but I've had a couple of people say to me that they didn't like it. I'm intrigued to see what I think. And then of course there's a few other books that I want to get. We have Claire Hayward who wrote Daughters of Sparta. She's written a new book that's out. I really want to get that one um, and that's actually to do with the women around Perseus. So again working in with the fact that I want to read more about Medusa. So very excited for that. Again Stone Blind. So there's quite a few and this is a topic that I think I'm always going to constantly be reading and I think maybe next year I'll do an updated of these are more Greek myths that I've read and what ones I recommend and how I feel about them. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit of a longer one, but I really enjoy Greek mythology. I love all the different retellings. And to be honest, there's only been a handful that I haven't enjoyed reading. And that's mainly because of the writing style rather than the actual stories. So yeah, let me know if you've got any other Greek myth retellings that I didn't mention on here that are a bit lesser known or you think I should give a try. I'm always on the lookout for more. That is the video. I've been talking forever. My mouth is really dry now. <laughs> Not that you needed to know that, but I am, I'm worn out. Um, so I'm going to go get myself a drink. I think for this video, put anything that you think relates to Greek mythology in the emojis below. I think there's some like pillars. Is it like a pillar or something? I don't know. Something. I mean, it could be a knife for all the tragedy and killing that goes on in these books. You take your pick. <laughs> You can tell I'm tired. I have not thought about it. But yeah, let me know. Have you read any of these? Would you recommend any of these? And are there any other Greek myths that you would be interested in picking up? Thank you so much for watching. As I said, just put a comment that you think a comment that you think, an emoji that you think works with this. It could be a snake for Medusa, or it could be a knife, you know, take your pick. I'm gonna go. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment. Those three things are so helpful to helping this channel grow. So thank you so much. My social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the very next video.